you mentioned the Gordon thing and the basically some the concept of somebody winning a lottery when they join a team. I do think that should be considered when we're talking about the greatest players ever. Like if you're a Magic's team and you knew how to run the floor, you fucking hit the lottery. If you were on Bird's team and you knew how to cut and move, you won the lottery. Um, we haven't had a lot of win the lottery guys lately, right? It's 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 this 21st century, and that's why I was so interested to hear Arenas kind of disparaging Jokic on JJ and Tommy's pod, you know, because he's like, I just don't, you know, he just does, doesn't get the style. He's like, he's used to like the Kobe version of how basketball is played, which I think a lot of people are. But that style is also, you're going to have to fit around what I do, right? And I, I think even somebody like LeBron has been guilty of that to some degree. It's like, you're going to, he takes somebody like Kevin Love, it's like, you're going to have to be a corner three guy for me. And that's what we need for the team. Like, it's these moving pieces around to fit what he does. Whereas I, I don't see that with with Jokic. I feel like he could play with any type of player and and he would just make it work. Am I overthinking this? You're making yeah, a face. I, I, I really push back on the LeBron thing. Because as we were talking about it, I'm going, how long is this list? Not just who can win a title. Because look, there's an, there's an argument to be made about like Giannis kneeing, needing to be set up. I think the biggest struggle that I always had with the Embiid Jokic thing, or maybe I should never have said I had a struggle with it because I, I don't think deep down I ever believed that Embiid was better than Jokic. And we're not talking about the MVP vote, but it was always, can you take control of a possession and create an opportunity on your own? And Embiid is still somebody that needs to, you know, maybe be put in a position. And then mm. once it's on him, it's not like he's going to be like, he's just a different player, right? So it's, I don't want to, but if we're talking about like the best single guy at doing this in the world, um, I think Steph is in that group of whenever you go play with him, unless you're a lottery pick, <laughs> uh, your life should be easier. <laughs> I saw what you did there. <laughs> right. I think that. But that I might do have, think, I think Steph I, I needs certain back, type of guys though. I, right, I think I Steph would, still needs the Bam Draymond type of somebody to play off of guy. Okay. But everybody needs like one big guy out there. So that's, I, I, if we're talking about the list of guys, I would push back on LeBron. That's why I was making the face because, sure, like at times, once he's kind of done with you, almost like a Tom Brady to a receiver thing where you're like, this is oh, fun. That's a good comparison. <laughs> right. Yeah, like, I'm out. You're, this guy's done with me and now I'm shot. There's definitely some of that. But if you're good, if you're good, your life is easier with LeBron. Like, I don't want to hear about Chris Bosch's shot attempts being down um, because – they won those games like LeBron figure out a way. So, so I'm I, with you on, I'm with you on Miami LeBron. I think that, I think that especially the last couple of years of him, he was very, I used to call him like queen of the chessboardy. I don't know this version of LeBron. I, it's too hard to say he's been in the league for 20 but, years, but look, if, if Jokic had a Westbrook, that's not going to work either. That, I mean, the thing I would say that's right about who, the creation. Who would Westbrook work with? Let's go. Let's go. Let's take that the other way. Westbrook would be like the guy going, if you want me to show up and do a one on zero workout before the draft, I will. <laughs> <laughs> like all these other guys turning stuff down. That Westbrook's would be a like, good science experiment. Could Jokic make Westbrook work? <laughs> uh, maybe off what the bench, like? energy when he's not. But yeah, so I mean, there's still some stuff that it'd be nice. Like, hey, do you have a shot? Do you have a shot? And that's the part where Denver deserves a lot of credit for figuring it all out. Like, look, as bad as Michael Porter Jr. has been in this series, he lit it up in the previous three rounds. Bruce Brown not only is a shooter, he's a really good cutter. He also can survive when things break down to dribble you in and out of something. Uh, the Christian Brown stuff where he's actually putting it on the floor and driving. It's not just cuts one dribble and in or take a shot yeah. and make a decision. Like, he's handling it. And Murray is you know because he's not as quick and dynamic maybe as some of like the really premier point guards that we've seen but that guy gets loose he gets space for himself on every one of those dribbles so i still think jokic because of his passing like a lebron you you can't just put him out there with like <laughs> he can't play with four pat bevs right so that's where again back to the whole list of it's a lottery ticket to play with these guys lebron to me is still on that list uh, of of what is not even a double digit list of players is that fair? I think you're no, I think you're right. And I think that's fair. I wouldn't have him. He'd be on second team all NBA for that list for me because we saw him struggle with certain guys. Is there anyone else? Because then I, this could veer into, hey, this guy's really good list, <laughs> which is what not, well, which is not the purpose of what we're talking about. I felt like New Jersey kid, you could have basically thrown 
any four guys with him and he could have won 50 games. Like he hit that stretch for two years. Maybe the league was a little weaker. Uh, and Nash in the mid 2000s, same thing. Give him like two shooters and one guy to play defense and one big man who he could do pick and roll. He would, he could have made anything work. So there, it's it's I think a tiny bit bigger list than we're giving it credit for, but it's also not a not a large list, right? Yeah, it, it's not a large list because it's not just hey, this guy is really good, which is always kind of funny about Gilbert Arenas, who I love having on, by the way. Okay, yeah, but I. Kind of back to some of the original Jokic stuff. He seems to be a bit more protective of the American players. Like, we just had this guy dogging Giannis. I mean, his yeah. timing, I'll, I'll give him this. I can't believe he's not on first take more because his timing of dogging the guy who's like at the top of the mountain <laughs> couldn't right. be worse. And so I think there are probably some people listening to this where, you know, if Jokic pulls this off and the whole thing, it's going to be like, all right, Giannis is allowed to be, you know, he's not allowed now to be in the conversation with Jokic, which I think is an overreaction and a bit unfair. But clearly there's more Jokic can do offensively with you as a team. But it's, I think, dismissive of who Giannis has become as a passer. Like, I think Giannis is actually a really good passer. He's just, nobody's Jokic. You know, we're, we're talking about like all time stuff. Oh, Saruti mentions KD. I don't. I don't know if KD is an elevator like these guys, but is the guy that can move into any sort of offense and and figure out how to fit in. Yeah, that's what I've always liked about KD and why I had higher hopes for Phoenix is that he's the rare superstar who doesn't disrupt literally everything else you're doing. But yeah, you know, honestly, it felt like with he and Booker, it was just two guys trying to survive against a team that's going to win a title. And now, on an out man team, you know who sh who we should mention in this conversation is T Mac, because. It, like that Rockets 22 game winning streak that they had and the pieces that he was playing with. I just felt like you could have thrown anyone with T-Mac at that point of his career and you could have been a 50 win team. Uh, let's take a break and then let's not, though. Hold hold up real quick. I want to just hammer your Jason Kidd point here because the previous year uh, with Phoenix with Kidd for the full season, they went 51 and 31. Yeah, he's he's gone. They go. Uh, I think they had thirty four wins. The Nets went from twenty six and fifty six to fifty two and thirty. So you're doing something right. You're doing. I don't want to say Chris Paul, but it's 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 like that. I'm glad you brought up Kid because that's the kind of. And yes, we could talk about like some of the other moving parts, but if you look at two specific franchises. You know, and that trade was was a weird trade for a bunch of different reasons. But like to see that kind of jump in wins, and then the other team goes in a completely opposite direction. I guess you're doing something right. Maybe this is a longer list because I KG did that for the Celtics in the 0708. Duncan did that his whole career. Elevators. I, I guess the slight and LeBron, you know, is oh year after year was a guaranteed 50 plus wins. I guess what I was thinking of was was just more the concept of a player who was able to change teammates' destinies from where their career should have gone to where it went just because they passed through the guy's life for a few years. Like, you no, know, you I, can look I, at somebody like Michael Cooper. Wrong. Right. Like Michael Cooper, I if he's expect, just like on I Sacramento didn't. for, if he's, <laughs> let's say he's on the Kings for seven years, then he goes over to like, you know, the Jazz we, we probably don't even remember him, but he's with Magic. He's like the perfect guy to put with Magic. He can hit threes. He runs the floor. He plays D. He can guard the best guy on the other team and just fits with Magic. Right. I just, I was laughing at the idea. I was like, I didn't think we were going to get to Michael Cooper when we started this, but you're, you're right to, because I'm in agreement. Like this should be a very, very short list. So, you know, KG, right. We both understand what he meant. Like how once he walked in the door, yeah, he almost elevates the intensity and the overall right. something about a team. But I don't, I don't, and maybe he changed the destiny of somebody like Perkins with the off the court stuff. But yeah, with the LeBron thing, like I just, I guess for me, it's the Kevin Love piece that I can't shake with the LeBron thing, where it's like that guy was a twenty five and twelve, and he went on the Cavs and was just a fucking mess. And it's like, but that doesn't make sense because I don't feel like if you went on Jokic's team, you would not turn into a mess. Or if you went on Magic's team, it's very rare. Like Maurice Lucas struggled on Magic's team. Like they, it's not like he was batting a thousand, but um, but they, there were guys that weren't like perfect fits with LeBron, with Kobe, with whoever.